Hey guys, how's it going? This is Wiz25. Bringing you a quick look at one of my favorite games that's just been released, Medieval Engineers. It's uh, made by the same guys who made Space Engineers. Um, I believe it's the same publishing company, different dev team. There's two separate teams working on it. Um, it is basically... Uh, if, what it's going to be eventually is... A game that you can either play creative mode which is what's able to be played right now and then there's gonna be a survival mode where you know yeah you want to build a big castle you're gonna to have to go out and go mine some stones you have to go chop down a bunch of trees to get to wood um, and who knows what else is gonna be installed what's gonna be added uh, this is what you get right now it's uh, currently early access it is $20 if you do not own Space Engineers, if you do own Space Engineers, it is $15. They give you a, you know, a small discount for already supporting the development team. Quick look at the options. Um, you got your basic uh, options that you would expect in an alpha. Um, I have to disable headbot. Oh, it gives me motion sickness. <laughs> um, a lot of the stuff will look very similar. Two space engineers because it's made on the same engine um, but I'm sure a lot of it's gonna change over time uh, the further along the development cycle gets there are some weird bugs though because you know alpha like uh, if I try to use full screen window it will crash the game guaranteed uh, they really want you to play on a wide uh, 16 by 9 aspect ratio which shouldn't be that big of a problem but if you're on an older computer or possibly a laptop it may give you issues Uh, it's got pretty good graphic choices, but currently, I personally prefer to play them on lower because it is an alpha. You know, there's no optimization in alpha. Everything is just throwing as much content to be put into the game as you can. During the beta stages, when games generally will optimize themselves. Uh, I will say the audio option is a little bit, a little bit skimped. Uh, there's no like quality sound or whatnot. There's just you get your sound and your music, that's it. And then, of course, uh, you have at least you have invert controls for those people who like that. Mouse sensitivity. And then there's plenty of controls you have to learn. Uh, because it's a fairly complex game, uh, on the surface, it looks very easy and all that kind of stuff, which is good. But to build something really majestic, really large, grand in scale, you're going to have to learn a lot of these controls. All right, and when you start, when you first get the game, you can you automatically get a few different scenarios that you can play. Uh, you have Quick Start, which is just um, a small house on a on a little rocky outcropping. Two houses. There's just like a small village and. A single tower with a uh, stone walkway. Plains is just a, a barren plains. The castle is a huge castle on a on a hilltop. It's very fun to if you just want to destroy the castle and admire the physics. Um, it's a really good place to do it, but it has a very long load time because it's alpha. Nothing's optimized. There's a ton of objects that are loaded. So be wary if you have a a lower end PC, you want to probably avoid the castle just for now. Bridges is pretty much a smaller version of castle. It's got a keep, a tower, and there's two bridges that you can destroy. Um, it's usually what I do my tests on and my destruction physics on because it loads up really quickly. Um, it's not as in depth as the castle, but it's still a lot of fun. And then you have different terrain versions. Uh, sizes for if you want to just build your own little contraptions and, and buildings and whatnot. Uh, I think we're going to start on bridges. Just uh, just to give you guys kind of a quick quick show what's going on. And then of course you can name it, you can put a description, autosave. If you're going to build something you want autosave on for sure. And then structural integrity. This is one of the biggest game changers about this game. You can just turn it off and then you can build whatever you want as, fa as fantasy-esque as you want and don't have to worry about how heavy something is or 
what's connected to what, etc, etc. You turn it on, it changes the game entirely, as I'm about to show you. All right, this is um, this is bridges. As you can see, as you can see it's kind of a, a smallish area. Over here, they kind of give you a little quick, small little cart that you can build something like this. And of course, you know it's full, it's fully movable. But let's talk about structural integrity. If I press N. You see these weird little grid patterns and you're just like, you know, what does all this mean? You know, it, it doesn't make any sense. I don't know why this block is here, I just noticed that. <laughs> um, this is showing you what is under stress and what's under load. If it is green or white, I mean, it is perfectly fine, you know. It's able to hold that load without any issue. The more yellow it gets, the more load it's under, it's starting to get stressed. But still holding. If it turns red, it means it's on the brink of failure, which means you're probably about to watch something collapse very quickly. And here I will give you a quick demonstration. Let me just clear my toolbar. But before I do my demonstration, these are the blocks that come in this alpha so far. You have everything from all kinds of different stone pieces that you can build your castles out of, including like battlements and all that kind of stuff. You've got your wood section here for if you wish to build, you know, houses and whatnot, including the roofs. This is a section where if you want to build your catapults, your windmill pieces, that kind of stuff. And then, you know, some decorative blocks for to put in your castle or whatnot when you're done. Um, all of these are totally destructible and they're a lot of fun. Character tools, this is the projectile throwers. Uh, that, really, that you can just manually throw a cannonball or whatnot you want to call it and destroy something. There's no animations in here yet or generative blocks. And then the voxel ones, this is where you can actually edit the terrain. So like, you know, if you wish to, you know, it's like, oh well I want there to be uh, a, an outcropping right here and I want to build something on top of this, you know, you're able to do that. Well, if you don't like it, you can simply remove it by right-clicking. But once again, this is extremely early alpha, so a lot of this stuff is not entirely working as intended. A lot of it is a little bit off. But I will say that the destruction physics are amazing. Um, like, here we go. We'll leave this on. And I'm going to throw a, a block uh, right here. Now you may be wondering, okay, well, what happened? <laughs> what happened was, I'll, throw, I'll do it again as to show you. That's what happened, is that a, a force hit this, it couldn't take it, so it's broken. And it has these amazing destruction blocks. Um, you're able to adjust in the graphics somehow. I haven't figured this out yet. You can adjust how much debris is on the... Like the the game, like this is all considered debris once it breaks apart. Now this is has real world physics. So if we knock out another piece, and we press N, and you'll notice the more I do this, notice how it turned red. 
That means that that failed its load and it fell off because it could not support its weight anymore. Alright, let's see. I need a couple more hits. Oh, this thing really wants to hold. And the reason why is because you have these lovely arches here. These pieces right here, arches will make something extremely tough. But no matter how good the arch is, it cannot survive if the laws of physics do not allow it. Now you're going to notice how more pieces are falling is because they're reaching their structural integrity limits. Like we have pieces right here, which are very close to breaking. And if I were to simply drop a cannonball on it, there, you notice how it turned red real quick? That means it failed. That's going to be the key to when multiplayer comes in this and you start besieging other people's castles. It's not about having the biggest, uh, the baddest catapults or battering rams or siege towers. It's about knowing how to take down a castle. Like as, for, as formidable as this right here appears, a couple of hits in the correct spot will easily topple anything as long as you know where you're, what you're hitting. So, for example, this keeper, this tower right here, one shot right there, that's all it took. <laughs> I'll bear in mind, some of the stuff is it's obviously an alpha, like right here, it's still trying to hang. Um, however, another quick smack, and there, that's what it should have been. And you will notice how I'm using this fly mode, it is reminiscent from Space Engineers. Um... But I mean, you know, it's helpful for building. But, uh, your guy looks kind of cool. You know, he's like a, uh, he looks exactly what you would expect him to look like. Uh, some sort of medieval-esque engineer. Now, of course, I mean, it's not all about dis just destroying castles. I mean, God, it is a lot of fun. But I mean, it's fun to build stuff too, right? Well, thanks to having Steam Workshop enabled, I'm offline right now, so it's going to say that. You can build cool things like, <laughs> like this. Hold on. There, put the uh, cannonballs away. Now, hold on. This might break. And because this is alpha, you know, there's obviously going to be bugs, which is... Etc. Etc. And there we go. There, a nice flat area. Whenever you're gonna copy and paste something, it's always the best thing to do. There. This is a siege tower actually built on my stream, and is fully functioning. All I have to do is hook up the ropes here. Now this is just because of a limit, uh, a glitch in the Steam Workshop. You have to make sure all your ropes are undone. Otherwise, you're going to have a bad time. <laughs> then I just simply oops, come up here and hold down T. Oops, Shift T. And there you go. This is a bona fide siege tower. Um coming up to your walls to smash them down and let me and all my allies pillage your castle. <laughs> now you can simply, I can simply just lower it. But where's the fun in that? So you can also just cut the ropes to it. And it didn't work. <laughs> there we go. And that would smash on the wall and then you could easily storm over. Um, but I mean, the workshop, people are already building amazing things in this game. And there's so much more to be able to be built. Like, this is my first invention ever. I built this on my stream. It is really ridiculous. <laughs> it is a massive catapult with three arms. And like I said, there's a problem with ropes currently. Where currently the arms on the catapult are being pulled back. When I spawn this in, it's going to cut the ropes and make them go forward and break it. Hopefully this will be fixed in a later patch, but e even still, it is still a mighty machine that I built. 
Now, ignoring the fact that the, the, the two back wheels broke, this is just something you can cobble together in, you know, 30 minutes. You know, and it can, I mean, it can still fire, even though it's, uh, the wheels are broken on it. It wouldn't exactly drive very efficiently, but you can still simply hook up your catapults. And we're going to do, what is it, T. That guy's kind of glitching out a little bit because of the broken part. There you go. We'll just pull back all three of the catapults. Now, I'm not going to hit anything, obviously, with this. <laughs> Actually, wait. I, if I... Hold on. Clear you. Um, siege tower. Control pace. Yeah, I know it's gonna. I know it's gonna break. It's okay. There's currently some copy paste issues with uh, with the game. Once again, you know, it's alpha. It's only been out for less than a week, so I can't exactly fault it too greatly. Okay, I'm not gonna do it again. This should hopefully hit it. This is probably one of my favorite things to do. Is um, Steam now currently if I just spawn this it's just a static object and if I tried to catapult it nothing would happen It would probably break the arm because of the weight You can press J with any object mind you and it makes it a dynamic object Now it's a free-flowing object that is affected by gravity Now if we quickly come back here and then press T on these There we go. Ooh, that was a good hit on the uh, stone there. I missed the catapult, uh, the siege tower, unfortunately. <laughs> but this is just a little quick look at this game. This is, once again, this is uh, Medieval Engineers. It is brought to you by the same developers of Space Engineers. So you know it's going to be a really good game. And it is really early, but already it's seeing... This, what is being done is amazing. There's stuff like this right here. I mean, I took out one support, and it just happened to be just enough to bring down the whole bridge. Now, you are seeing rubble phasing out it's because it's hit my limits that I've set on here. But, I mean, this is what's going to be so amazing when multiplayer comes into this. Is that if a person gets a lucky catapult shot off and manages to hit some weak spot on your castle... Look at that. One shot. Your whole entire defense network is gone. <laughs> Not to mention the rubble that has now fallen down here. Gives him a kind of crappy but usable entrance into your ca your castle now. <laughs> but anyway, I'm just rambling now. So once again, this is just a quick look at Medieval Engineers. Hopefully you guys enjoyed. I am Wiz25 saying adios.